The 2020 Kia Telluride has been hyped up and raved about, and there's so many good reviews on this thing. Well, we're gonna take a full detailed look at the interior, the exterior, cargo room, headroom, all that good stuff, and go for a test drive, and we're gonna see if this thing is truly worth the hype. I'm gonna tell you both the good and the bad about this vehicle coming right up. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in for this 2020 Kia Telluride. It's a big, boxy, three-row SUV with a higher class look. And let me tell you, it is pretty impressive. Let's take a look at all these exterior details. So starting out up front, I've got this blinker on over here. We've got LED daytime running lights right around the headlight there. Our model has the amber color, which looks really nice. It really stands out. It also acts as the blinker, LED positioning lights. So every model except the top SX trim is gonna have projector halogen bulbs, which really surprised me. But we have the LED headlights that you see right there on here. We don't actually have Kia's air bending technology on here, which surprised me, but you got LED fog lights with the top trim as well. Now at night, these headlights do look pretty nice, especially that amber glow around the headlight. It really stands out and looks premium. The actual headlight performance themselves, they do a good job. The LED fog lights really don't give you much in terms of width like some other fog lights do, but it still lights up the road pretty well. I just am surprised we don't have Kia's air bending technology for the adaptive left and right headlights. Kia's Tiger Nose Grille, which I think looks pretty nice on this vehicle. I really think that it fits and Telluride right across the front of the vehicle that really makes this thing stand out. Give it, it gives it quite a presence. Another thing to note is that the grille is gonna be a little bit different depending on the trim. So it's gonna be a gray painted grille on the base model, but ours is this dark gray with the satin chrome surround, and that's gonna be on the S and up. And then there's even a fake little air duct on each side right there there's not an actual vent coming out the back to give you air to your wheels and you don't need it but it just gives it a little bit more of an aggressive look if you ask me so this paint color is the dark moss this is probably what almost all of you have seen it's what pretty much all press vehicles have been it's not available on the base model so if you really like this darker green slightly brownish tinted color it's not available on the base not every color is available on every trim but this color is pretty cool it really takes seeing it in person to appreciate it in my opinion it looks different in some different lighting sometimes it definitely looks more green sometimes it looks a little bit more brown um, but it's it's honestly seems like a pretty high class color every telluride is going to vary with its wheels here so the lower trims will give you 18s we have these 20 inch wheels and we have the black 20 inch wheels with 245 50 series tires i'm a fan of black wheels i think they look nice especially with this shape of the Telluride and the color of the Telluride. And with those wheels, we also get vented front disc brakes and solid rear disc brakes, and then a fully independent suspension front and back. Kia also gives us power folding mirrors on the top two trims. Every single mirror is gonna have heated glass for those wintertime people, as well as the LED turn signal that you can see right there. And the blind spot indicator is gonna be on them as well and on this top trim you got the reverse tilt function so the mirror can tilt down when you go in reverse which is always nice door handles are also going to vary a little bit depending on the trim um, body color only door handles on the lower trims but right here we've got this satin with the, the satin chrome with body color combination and it looks pretty nice i'll show you the smart key system in a little bit you've also got the trim piece running along the bottom and then a little surprising was the kind of just black plastic that runs around the bottom as well but still it's not going to be eaten up by paint chips and stuff like that quite like paint will be now in terms of size this Kia Telluride is just about 197 inches long it's quite a bit longer than the Sorento which is 189 inches long and also a three row it's a little bit longer than the Toyota Highlander uh, the Ford Explorer is 199 inches so this is a little bit smaller than the Ford Explorer in terms of exterior size, but let me tell you, the interior size is phenomenal in this thing. 
and ground clearance is going to run right at eight inches which is not too bad but not certainly not the best you could possibly get i believe the cx9 is in the upper eight inches and now as we make our way to the back you can see that the boxy shape continues back here which is nice you've kind of got this spoiler up top as well that fin and we have an led uh, high mount, high mounted light right there our model has led combination tail lights the two top trims will those led strips running down right there and then on the right side i do have the blinker on so you can kind of see that as well and more big telluride telluride riding back here and that's named after the town in colorado actually so it's kind of cool i think it's unique and it's uh you know the people in telluride i wonder how you feel about it then as we get down below her, we've got this garnish back here as well for a trim piece and then the twin outlet exhaust which is on everything except the base model now for the 2020 Kia Telluride, Kia went all in on safety. We've got the Kia DriveWise, standard on every single model. It's gonna be blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, driver attention warning, your forward collision warning with automatic emergency braking, including pedestrian detection, lane departure warning with lane keep assist, lane following assist, rear parking sonar, smart cruise with stop and go, safe exit assist, rear occupant alert, so it prevents the passengers from getting out and it will let you know if there's anything going on in the back seat, including alerting you on your phone if you're connected with the UVO app. It'll let you know if there's movement detected in the back seat, which is pretty cool just in case you forget somebody or something back there. Then on the EX trim, you've got highway driving assist that monitors and adjusts to the speed limit if you have it on auto. The SX will give you the blind spot view monitor that you see on the inside of the vehicle when you turn your signal on, kind of like Honda Lane Watch, but it's on both sides and it's in addition to blind spot monitoring. Also with the SX, we've got front parking sonar in addition to the rear that you get on the rest of them, a surround view monitor that works very well, automatic high beams, and then the prestige package will give us rain sensing windshield wipers and aerodynamic windshield wipers. You know, one function that I really like with the Kia and Hyundai products is the smart hands-free tailgate. All you gotta do is stand here for a few seconds with the key fob with you, or you can even stand next to the vehicle. You just gotta be close to this and it will automatically lift up. EX trim level and SX trim level. Now once you do get this open, you've got a grab handle right here. You've got a button where you can lower it down. I'm five foot nine and I can stand with mm, a little bit of room above my head. You can adjust this tailgate to kind of go to different heights. And then once you get to the back behind the third row, you're gonna have 21 cubic feet, plenty of space for some bigger bags. Once you fold the second row down, you've got 46 cubic feet, or excuse me, the third row down, 46 cubic feet. And once you fold the second row down and have every row down, you've got 87 cubic feet, which is certainly very good numbers, especially considering uh, the size of the vehicle overall and just the dimensions that the passengers get for their room as well. All right, gang, let me give you a closer look at the cargo area and show you what it's all about. So first of all, I've got this carry-on suitcase right here. It can lay like that, unlike some other vehicles. You can have it standing up. It can't quite stand up like this, but you can turn it to where it's up like that, and that'll still fit. And you can fit quite a bit of stuff back here. There's actually a lot more room than you would think. There's also a couple of tie-down areas, one below, one above. Right up there in the middle is a nice, bright, center mounted led light and then underneath of here so it says it's rated at 130 pounds we've got this uh, mat right here you can lift this up and it can kind of wedge in there so it stays out of your way and it's actually fairly deep our spare tire is underneath of here and oh there's my backpack anyways you can fit some uh pretty good sized stuff back here no problem so definitely some nice visible and hidden cargo area and then folding these seats down, the third row down, is really easy. So even if the headrests are up, you don't have to touch them. You just pull on this, the headrest goes down, and then boom, that seat's down, boom, that seat's down, knockout. All right, and look at that, nice big area. Then you have access to a couple other little storage bins, like the cup holders in that side area right there. And we're not done yet. So if we wanna fold the second row down without going back there, We've got these two buttons right here. You've got your left seat, push the button, that'll go down. Right seat, push the button, that one goes down. Easy peasy, nothing to it. Now you do have to go to the second row in order to bring those back up, 
But in order to bring these ones back up, all I gotta do is pull it and it'll kind of latch into place. Look at that, lickety split. Really nice cargo area, I really, really like it. Um, tons of space back here, especially considering it's not even as long as a Tahoe or an Expedition. You've even got plenty enough room to lay back here. Now obviously if you have these captain's chairs, it's not ideal because you might fall through the middle like you do off your top bunk. But you can lay here and check out the sun, no, the moonroof. But you can lay here and you can check out the stars up in that moonroof and let me tell you, it's not a bad place to be. So every single key is gonna give us the smart key system which is right here. You've got your lock on top, your unlock, your uh, opening up the hatch and your uh, panic button. I like the way this key fob looks, I like the way it feels, it's no doubt that you know you're for sure you're on your lock button. No remote start with the key fob, that is available through your UVO app, which is free for a year and then you got to pay for it after that, which I hate, I can't stand paying for something after you pay 40 plus grand for a vehicle. So the way Kia's system works is in order to lock it, hit that button and then the mirrors will automatically fold if you have the power folding mirrors. And then to unlock it, there's not a sensor back here, which is the style that I prefer. You have to actually push that button again in order to unlock it. Not a big deal, but another thing about this is that you have approach lighting when you get up to the vehicle and the mirrors will actually open up if you choose it to, which is pretty nice. Another thing is I wish that the back doors, so I'm gonna lock it again. And then I wish that the back doors had a smart access system. There's no button, there's no sensor, so you're limited to the front doors and the rear gate. Now hopping into the front seat of the Telluride, the base two models, the LX and the S trim, get the Sofino seat trim, which is a synthetic leather trim. The S and EX model give you 10-way power adjustable driver seat with lumbar support that is also heated. The EX and SX trim are gonna give you the leather seats. This top end SX trim has the Napa leather seats. Heated seats are on everything except the base model. Ventilated seats are on the top two models, EX and SX. The SX trim will give you two position memory settings, power passenger seat, just not lumbar support, 12-way power driver seat with lumbar support, including a thigh extension piece, which isn't something you always see. And then optional is gonna be Napa leather. And we have the Napa leather in here. They call it gray. This interior looks very nice. These seats are comfortable. And when I sit up tall, I've got plenty of headroom up above my head. I've got good shoulder room, good hip room. Everything seems to fit and feel nice in here. And my seats have a decent amount of bolstering around them. They are nice and soft, but still supportive. I've had no trouble at all being comfortable in here whatsoever. Another optional feature is a heated steering wheel on the EX and the SX, which we have it right here, and the entire wheel is heated. It is manual tilt and telescoping, and it's got a pretty good range of motion, especially the telescoping portion. And then another thing that you can get optional on the SX trim is the head-up display that goes right in front of your face. Now, in my opinion, it sits a little crooked and to the left, a little low and to the left, which I'm not a big fan of. You can change the height and the tilt of it and I have not been able to see it with my polarized glasses on some of the time. But it does still show you quite a bit of stuff. You've got your speed, you've got your lanes, you can see your blind spots, cruise, all that. It's really nice to see and it's an extra safety feature as well to keep your eyes up and to alert you of your blind spots immediately. Now taking a look at the interior of the Kia Telluride, there's nothing to base this off of, so it's an all new interior. It's got a modern look with soft materials, a simple functional layout as well. Plus at night we have mood lighting is what they call it on the SX trim, which will give you strings of light around the cabin with up to 64 different colors and it really sets the mood and looks pretty nice. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at the rest of the interior. So up above, we've got a semi-soft material and it turns into a little bit of a ledge. Reminds me of Mazda right there. Fake trim pieces right here, but they do look pretty nice. It even has an open pour look as they say. Nice interior door handle, the satin memory settings right there. And then we've got uh, automatic windows. The armrest is not super soft at least with padding, but the material is nice. I've had no discomfort. Then you've got a little bit of a harder, you know, a little bit of uh, softness to this, but not too much. My biggest complaint with the door is the storage 
down below. So I like to have my bigger bottle with me in the main part or over here at times or some other junk and it's just pretty small. My tall bottle does not fit. Right on the inside we've got our interior lighting controls. You can turn your blind spot monitoring on or off, your lane keep assist on or off, traction control, and then open the rear gate. Now if we go ahead and shut the door, it's a really nice solid door slam in my opinion and then I'll give you a quick look at the interior. So soft touches up above, more of the imitation wood trim as well. It just, it looks different. You know, it's definitely unique. People are probably still not a big fan of the tablet type screen, but overall it's a functional layout. Now let's go ahead and start it up. Push button start, foot on the brake. And one thing I forgot to mention is that when you turn it on, the seats do have entry exit system. The steering wheel has some nice controls, voice controls, radio controls, seeking controls over there in your source button. On the opposite side, we've got our cruise control. You can scroll through your pages uh, up on your information display. Rain sensing windshield wiper stock right there. Now Kia gives us a couple of analog gauges with a seven inch display in the middle, only on the SX trim. A 3.5 inch display will be on the rest of the trims, which is a little bit surprising and pretty small in today's standards. Now if I use the buttons on the steering wheel, I can scroll through quite a bit of information on here. So I'll kind of show you digital speedometer. You can have your drive modes that are visible there. My fuel economy so far with mostly highway driving is 23.1. Not too bad at all considering I have done some city, but I still would like to see the actual EPA estimates to be better than the highway number that we see. Then I can scroll over. You have a compass, you can see your um, your safety stuff right here, it'll let you know whether or not um, it thinks that you need to take a break. You can see where the power is going to your wheels, which is nice. Tire pressure monitor as well. And then you've got all sorts of different settings you can change right here. This is actually where you can customize a lot of stuff on your vehicle, what doors unlock when you unlock it, any sounds, your seat moving or not, changing your head up display, all that good stuff. And you can turn off any of the driver assistance features that you want to if you don't like them or don't trust them. Now taking a look at Kia's 10.25 inch screen. A base model or the LX and the S model are gonna give you an eight inch screen, but the EX and the SX will give us this 10 and a quarter inch screen, which is tablet style, but I think it looks pretty good on this dash. The eight inch model will give you Sirius XM with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Standard. And our model has both of those, of course, plus navigation that you can see on our home screen over on the left. We have a six speaker system standard, but our particular top trim will have the Harman Kardon 630 watt 10 speaker system. That does sound pretty good in my opinion. Our home screen that we're looking at you can have this customizable to where right now it's map radio weather you can go to all of your menus right here it's not the fastest and most responsive but i think it does pretty well and it's got a very simple layout a ton of information that you can see on here we'll go to our driving info to where you can kind of track your efficiency your like a trip computer almost your map radio navigation menu you can customize different things on here and when you have your phone plugged in you can have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can change some setup settings. So you can change different settings with the vehicle in different systems of the vehicle. Um, easy entry, exit, entrance and exit system for your vehicle. All that good stuff on here and the other display. If you do decide to use the navigation, it is a pinch and zoom type of navigation. You can drag around as well. So it's definitely usable. I still prefer using it on my phone, but there are a lot of things that you can do and you can see on here, which is definitely pretty nice. Another cool thing is that you can access your rear climate controls on here. You have a driver talk button. So if I hit that, it's going to pick up my voice in here and then amplify it through the back uh, speakers. So your passengers can hear you, your kids can hear you, or you can just do like a, a pilot taking off and uh, give them a little, little directory to the destination. 
And then another thing that you have on here is quiet mode, and that will automatically quiet and silence the speakers in the back and lower the volume of your speakers in the front. So real quick, you can just turn their speakers off, have yours low if you want it quiet, if you got kids sleeping or, or whatever. Now right below the dash, we've got three nice large air vents. They seem to do a good job of giving everybody the air that they need. You've got all the buttons for your radio right here, including your favorites. You can go straight to your setup, a seek and track, quick shortcuts to your media, radio, navigation, or just your map, volume, and tuning knob as well, which are very welcome in my opinion. And then below that, we've got our heated steering wheel button right over here, dual zone automatic climate control, Plus, you've got controls for your AC right here. Everything is big and easy to read. Now, moving down below, we have a pretty nice large storage bin as well as some wireless charging on the top two trim levels, EX and SX. We've got a 12 volt power outlet as well as two USB ports right here. Now, you get an extra USB port uh, altogether compared to the lower trims with the top two trims. Our heated and ventilated seat functions are right here. They are three tier, it's just a toggle switch and the ventilated seats have worked well. They're not necessarily super cool, but they prevent your seat from being hot and when it's cooler, you can definitely feel them. Another thing is that they give us these grab bars on each side, which give you a little bit of something and just some nice material to rest your knee against. It's not necessarily padded, but if you're gonna do some off-roading, so Kia says, or go on an adventure, you have something to grab onto. The shifter is nice, and let me show you, we have a surround view monitor, which is great. It looks nice, it works well. You've got the vehicle over there. You can change your views right over here. So, it is definitely nice uh, having these options, and you can change the settings on here as well. But, I like having it over there. You can zoom in, and you've got dynamic guidance lines when you back up your vehicle. My large iPhone 7 Plus does fit in that cubby up there or some other junk if you want. My bottle has no trouble fitting in here. Small drinks, large drinks, they don't run into each other. I like those. Then we have our drive mode select. So you've got comfort, which is basically just normal mode. Sport mode, which we'll test out in the test drive. Eco, snow mode, smart mode. Smart will change you between eco, sport, or comfort, depending on your driving style automatically. And then you've got your differential lock. You can press that button in the middle if you're stuck or if you're really gonna be in some slippery situations to give you the best off-road all-wheel drive performance. Right next to that, we have the auto stop start button. It automatically defaults to having that on, so you can turn that off if you want. A brake hold button, electronic parking brake, your parking sensors, and your surround view camera. There's a little bit of piano black trim right here, but not enough to really bother me or to get too scratched up. This armrest is pretty good size. It's got a little bit of padding. It does not slide forward. I wish it would go a little bit forward at times when I want it to. You lift it up. You've got a USB port down there, pretty deep storage bin, a little tray right there that stays in place. There's just no interior lighting in there. Now as we look up above, we've got an automatic dimming rearview mirror with a few garage controls as well. That will be on the top two trims. The garage controls are only on the top trim though. Another thing is we have a premium headliner. So it might not look like much to you guys in here, but it's actually a really nice soft material that's on the pillars and on the roof of the vehicle. The visors are nice and large and they do open up and slide out just like that. You've got LED lighting up there with your vanity light. And then as I always like to look at visibility, one nice thing about the boxy shape, one, I like the way it looks, and two, visibility is actually better than you'd expect. And you can, of course, fold those headrests down if you want to. That back seat headrest kind of gets in the way, but most time I really don't have trouble at all. And then if I go to look over my shoulder, there's a decent sized gap. The handle doesn't really bother me too much over there. Now the back seat does not disappoint. So first of all, there's a grab handle to get in here. It's pretty easy for anybody to get in. And now that I'm sitting here, I've got the seat about even with where I would be at five foot nine. And I've got tons of knee space, tons of foot space. And you can even move the seat back and still have quite a bit of room. This second row also slides forward. 
to there and I can still sit if you want to give the maximum room allowed to the third row passengers. You can go all the way back and you can recline quite a ways back here. On top of that, you've got old blank handles. You've got AC vents above each side right here and in the third row. We've got climate controls right here and we've got this moonroof right up above us. Another nice thing is that each passenger with the captain's chairs gets their own ratcheting armrests. The EX trim level and up will give you these sunshades in the back. And we even have USB ports plugged in or right in the back of the seats, map pockets in the back of the seats, cup holders right in front of us right here because there's not actually a center console right here. We also have a 115 volt power outlet, a 12 volt power outlet as well. This is a really nice place to be. Another nice thing is that there's LED lighting in every trim except the base model in here. So LEDs here and in the third row. Now, if you really want to get bougie back here with your backseat passengers, on the top trim, which we have right now, it's optional if you want to get heated and ventilated second row seats. So that's pretty cool. One downfall to the Telluride, and it's kind of common in other vehicles as well, is how you can get your seven or your eight seat configurations. This seven passenger model with the captain's chairs is standard on the S and the SX model. And the eight passenger is standard on the others, but with the S model, you can at least option to get the bench seat. So the SX trim that we have right here cannot get an eight passenger system and the LX and EX cannot get a seven passenger system. But one thing that's really nice that's standard on every trim is the one touch slide. So there's a button up here if you're gonna exit and a button right down here if you're gonna enter, you just push that, it will fold and then it's real easy for a kid to push it out of the way. So that is really nice. Then there's this nice large area to get in. Otherwise, you can just come in and walk through here because there's no center console. Now back in the third row, there's a couple things, three things right off the bat that I did not expect back here. First of all, we've got air vents right above our faces. Second of all, these seats can actually recline a little bit. And the next thing is that there's USB ports back here as well. There's one on each side. Now, in addition to that, myself sitting back here, my knees are pressed up against the back of this seat. You can see I have, you know, some space under my thighs, so not a lot of thigh support for adults. This is not bad at all, and this seat's all the way back. Now, if I want to exit, I can push that little button on top of the seat to get that out of there, but to kind of give you an example, with that seat all the way in its track, you can see just how much knee space I can have and how much foot space I can have. So you can move quite a bit with that row, which is really nice. And then on top of that, we've got this sunroof right up above us to where we can check everything out from the third row. And this is a 60-40 split. This side where I am being the 40 split, so you can have some cargo and still have someone back here. Now powering the Telluride, Kia keeps it simple. We have a naturally aspirated, 3.8 liter V6, that's the only option you can get on here. This will put out 291 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque that comes out at 5,200 RPM. Eight-speed automatic is the only transmission that you can get on here, and we'll talk about how it drives in the test drive coming right up. Miles per gallon for all-wheel drive that we have right here is 19 in the city, 24 on the highway, and 21 combined. That highway number is definitely lower than some competitors, up to three miles per gallon lower than I believe the Subaru is sent the 2020 uh, Ford Explorer for their all-wheel drive models, as far as I know. Front-wheel drive MPG is gonna be 20 in the city, 26 on the highway, and 23 combined. 18.8 gallon fuel tank, which is great. And towing is gonna to come in at 5,000 pounds at any trim, front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, and you can get the towing package, which will give you a self-leveling rear suspension. So you don't have to have a saggy bottom when you're towing with this vehicle. Another thing to know is that this has the torque vectoring corner control, which really just breaks the inside rear wheel, but it can still aid in handling. And one of my favorite things is we've got a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. All right, everyone, we are on the test drive portion for the Kia Telluride here. And like I said in the beginning, is it worth the hype? Yes. To me, 
it is absolutely worth the hype and probably the best SUV in the class. Now, if you guys are new to the channel or you've been watching for a little while and you just haven't subscribed yet, please go down below, hit subscribe, click the bell to see weekly reviews like this, short reviews with my likes and dislikes, and some reviews on the Everyman Driver channel. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna give it a little acceleration in smart mode so it will automatically adapt. All wheel drive, floored. There you go, and the smart symbol turned red, so that means it put me in sport mode. And now that I'm letting off the gas for a little bit, it's probably gonna drop me right back down into comfort mode. But the acceleration on this thing is pretty good. It's not best in class by any means, it's not great. But when you smash on it and it drops down, let's put it in sport mode again. It'll go. And it's a nice, strong, powerful sounding engine. It's 3.8 liter, that's the biggest V6 in class. It doesn't necessarily have the most power in class. I wish it had a little bit more power, but it's still pretty good. Passing is no problem on the interstate. Now, I'm gonna put it back in smart mode. Now, right off the bat, my first impression when I climbed in here was that you kind of have a taller ride. You can sit up a little higher. You have good visibility, a good commanding view because it is a boxier shape and you don't have big swooping areas here with big pillars to block your visibility. The handling in this thing, it's kind of a big softy, honestly. The steering feedback isn't too bad. It's not real crisp and sharp for sure. It could definitely be a little better, but it's a comfortable vehicle to drive. Um, it's definitely comfort based in my opinion. It handles good enough, but when you take some sharp turns, you do feel the weight of this thing. It is a pretty good sized vehicle. So when you start to turn, you can definitely feel a little uneasy at times with, with some, some of the sharpest turns that you'll find. But day-to-day -day driving, very comfortable, very easy to maneuver, easy to keep in your lane. And the ride comfort also is pretty good. It's a softer ride. It's more of a soft ride uh, than you know a sporty ride, which kind of goes with the way that it handles and it's been comfortable. Some big bumps have made their way in here and do get a little uncomfortable like that one, more so than some other vehicles. I would still have to say that the best handling and best driving vehicle in the class is still the Mazda CX-9. It handles great uh, and I think it still is a really comfortable vehicle to drive as well. Now braking performance in here is pretty good. You do feel the weight of the vehicle, but those brakes do grab pretty well. Now I just tossed it back into sport mode. So you've got smart mode, smart mode, where it will automatically pick and put it in uh, whatever setting it senses for you. Uh, comfort mode, which is basically normal. Eco mode to dull your throttle response, give you better efficiency. And uh, of course your sport mode. And then you have snow and you can lock all your differentials. So one complaint that I've had is in sport mode, it's probably not really a problem, but when I'm cruising and I don't really want to get into it and pass somebody, it, it takes a while to drop down and it really drops down further than I would expect. But let's hustle it around some corners here and just kind of see how it feels. So right there, that's floored, and it's not giving me the most power on here, but in certain situations, it doesn't feel underpowered, it just feels big, it just feels kind of heavy. But most of the time, this thing is plenty adequate, and it's... It's got just, an, just as much power as I need, and when those RPMs get high, it's a pretty nice sounding vehicle. Now you can really feel the weight of it <laughs> going around that corner, but still not bad at all but I'm kind of at a rolling go right here pedal down and that wasn't too bad so you've had enough of that that's not what the Telluride is all about I got it back in smart mode and one thing I want to talk to you guys about is the noise vibration harshness all of that Kia has done a really good job of making this vehicle quiet so the biggest thing my decibel rating was very good on the interstate going 70 miles an hour 
which is a you know a normal surface for a, a lot of commuting and once I got on a rougher textured road it was a little bit higher than I was expecting but it was still pretty quiet and part of that is we've got laminated front or laminated side windows for the front doors laminated acoustic windshield up here as well the acoustic windshield is standard on every trim and then these uh, laminated side glass up here is on the EX and the SX so a little bit quieter cabin on the top two trims now I'm just getting onto a louder surface so you can kind of hear you can probably tell that there is more noise getting in here but it's still really quiet I haven't had any rattles whatsoever um, it's just a really solid feeling vehicle Kia did a fantastic job of making sure that this is serene it's quiet it's comfortable it's got enough power and they did a great job making this a good vehicle to drive now with driving it around all day every day um, parking lots cities highways all that it feels smaller it doesn't necessarily feel smaller but it's easier to maneuver than the size would suggest especially going into some parking spots and we have the available uh, surround view camera which helps a lot it's fantastic when you're parking I like their whole blind spot system where they've got the camera in here that's another available feature and the smart cruise control works really well the lane keep assist works fantastic it, it goes together to where it's it's very aggressive when you have it engaged during cruise control but it it really centers you in your lane and I'm gonna make a full video talking about just that uh, so if you want to see some of the safety tech that you got on here and some point of view uh, smart cruise control with the lane keep assist system maybe I'll even try to run into somebody and see if it stops be sure to look down below for that and I'll have the five likes and five dislikes down below as well now I'm just getting the Telluride on some gravel with some ruts and some washboards I want to see if there's any rattles out here this is the first time I've had it on gravel most time I get my vehicles on gravel before this to kind of get a feel for it it still feels solid you can feel some of the vibration coming through but still no rattles and this actually has the torque vectoring corner control suspension seemed to handle those ruts pretty well but that means that it's not a true torque vectoring system but it will break the inside rear wheel to help you in some handling maneuvers now this is not meant for true off-roading but you've got eight inches of ground clearance you've got an all-wheel drive lock button um, the departure angles and approach angles are pretty good as well I've got the screen on where I can see all four wheels I'm just going to accelerate normally and I could definitely tell there was a little bit of slip in the front and I could see it right there right away the front moved up then the back you can see that come in as well I have the lock on right now and we'll see what it does this time and that was better that was definitely better so the the back moved the same amount as the front so you've got the same torque going to all four wheels and the snow mode uh, we don't have the mud and sand mode here in the US but I believe the Canadian trims do But even on some of these big bumps, this thing does really well. And going around that corner, I could see all four wheels were putting power down, turn the lock off, and then it drops some of the power to the rear wheels. But in conclusion, in conclusion, this thing is absolutely worth the hype. I have been so impressed with this. And honestly, if I was getting a three row SUV, this is what I would go for. This would at least be towards the top of my list. I'm excited to see the 2020 Explorer and 2020 Highlander. As soon as I get reviews on those, I'll be sure to let you guys know and be sure to watch for them, subscribe, and click the bell so you can see it. But overall, very impressed with this Kia Telluride. Let me know down below what you think of it and which trim level you would get. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, watch the rest of the videos that I will have on this model, and I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day.